Hello everyone, and welcome to another video tutorial for Lightarama S5. This video is designed for new users looking for a high-level overview of how to use the programs in the Lightarama software suite, or for those needing directions on how to get started. For more information on any of the topics discussed in this video, just look for the tutorial in this series with a similar title or in the Lightarama help file. In the description of each video in this series, you'll find a breakdown of the included chapters, allowing you to more quickly search for help. You'll begin by either downloading the demo version of the Lightarama software or by purchasing a software license outright. Your license level determines which features you have access to, and most importantly, how many elements you can control in your display. You'll find a breakdown of the different license level features on Lightarama's website. If you purchase the software with certain hardware bundles, you'll even receive a discount. After you download the software on your computer, your first task is to build your preview, which is the virtual layout for your display. Before getting to this step, you'll want to have some idea of how you're going to decorate your home or venue, but you can definitely experiment virtually to get things right. You can load a picture of your house into the preview, then either draw strings of lights, or use the Add button to bring up a variety of options for importing props. You can import props directly from certain vendors, import saved props or entire S4 visualizers, or add a variety of predefined prop shapes. In the Prop Definition window, you'll select the shape of your element and fill out all of the details about color, string length and orientation, and unit ID and channel assignments. When starting out with a display, you'll likely be adding in AC channel props, dumb RGB props, or smart RGB props. Each type of light needs a different type of controller and has different settings and requirements for unit ID assignments in the Prop Definition window. Before you create your preview, be sure that you understand the difference between these three common choices and how you differently need to define each type of prop. Once you've added all of your elements, you can arrange things in groups to make sequencing easier later on, as well as make formatting changes to your elements. The Channel Conflicts and Bulk Changes tab at the top will warn you if you have any props with conflicting assignments and will also allow you to make changes to multiple props at once, like changing unit IDs, prop names, or adding leading zeros to reorder large groups of elements. The Other Warnings tab will show you problems unrelated to channel assignments. The String Summary tab allows you to copy your data over to a spreadsheet that you can print out and carry with you during installation, as well as make a few other edits. And the Statistics tab will give you a quick summary of what's in your display. Once your preview is built, you'll make your first musical or animation sequence. It's very important that you store your audio and sequences in a designated location you'll remember, like the Lightarama folder that was created when you installed the software. When creating a sequence, make sure that your selected preview name matches the name of the preview you've been working on. If you choose Quick Preview instead, you'll end up creating a new preview and won't be working with the lights in your display. The first step is to make a timing grid so that you can place effects corresponding to the music. You can make multiple timing grids per sequence and switch between them as you work. There are multiple audio wizards that can help get you started, such as the Beat Wizard. You can also make beat channels after you're done to help you keep track of what you're hearing in the music. To better organize your sequence, you can use grid configurations, which allow you to view your elements in a specific order and collapse groups of elements when you're not working with them to free up space on the screen. You'll use this menu to add a new view and to export your current view so that you can import it into other sequences. To make your grid views even more efficient, be sure to group your elements in the preview editor first. Placing effects depends on what kind of lights are in your sequence. Generally, if you're using AC channels, you'll select the channel effect type. If you're using dumb RGB, you'll use the color fade effect type. And if you're using smart RGB, you'll select motion, which stands for motion effects. In order to use the motion effect generator and preset smart RGB effects, you'll need the pro license level and to make sure you've added motion effect rows in for any props that will be using those effects. Superstar is an additional add-on software that allows you to sequence at an individual bulb level, which is particularly useful for smart pixel props, and also includes additional sequencing features not included in the main software suite. To learn more about Superstar and if it's right for you, visit the Lightarama website. The basic AC channel commands, which are also the foundation for using color fade and motion effects, are in the lower toolbar. Range allows you to set your minimum and maximum values when placing an effect, and the slope determines if your effect will be at the maximum or minimum intensity or fade between the two. More advanced AC channel commands can be found towards the beginning of the toolbar, which include toggle, fill, chase, and intensity. 
Using the right-click menu in the Sequencer Grid brings up a variety of additional advanced options, including the ability to place effects in the foreground or background of your sequence. The Select and Create buttons allow you to choose what happens when you click with your mouse somewhere in the Sequence Grid. You can automatically create an effect whenever you click when you choose Create, or you can use the Select tool to sequence with the extensive list of keyboard shortcuts or by inserting effects from the right-click menu. Once you understand the features of the different effect types as well as the top toolbar commands, it's up to you to be creative and make your sequences. No computer can replicate human creativity, so be sure to leave yourself plenty of time to sequence if you plan to do so on your own. There are plenty of helpful tools in the software that can simplify the process, but one sequence can take between 10 and 30 hours to create, depending on your familiarity with the software, your musical experience, how many elements are in your display, and the complexity of the song. Make sure you set realistic goals for what you can complete on your own depending on how late it is in the season. If you're not interested in creating your own sequences, or just don't have time, you can always purchase sequences instead. Once you have all of your sequences created, you'll take two different routes depending on if you're using a computer to run your show or a Lightarama MP3 director. If you're using a computer, you'll create a playlist in the show editor. Then set the times for your playlist to run using the schedule editor. If you have multiple networks in your display, which most commonly happens when you have a lot of smart pixels or are using DMX, you might need to visit the network preferences to let the computer know where to output data. If you're using an MP3 director, you'll use the Lightarama hub to build your playlist, set your schedule, and write the information to your card. There are a few reasons you might need to use the advanced creation option instead of simple, like if you have smart pixels with motion effects, so make sure you understand which one you need to use before trying to create your card. Finally, if you're using a computer to run your shows, you'll use the hardware utility to locate your connected controllers and make sure they all have the same unit IDs as what you defined earlier in your preview. If you're running shows with an SD card and director, you might need to use the hardware utility to confirm that the IDs match as well. Make sure that you use a Lightarama USB adapter and Cat5 line to connect your controllers to your computer for testing and playing your show, except if you're using a PixCon 16, which has a different method of configuration and use since it's an advanced controller. Once everything is properly labeled and connected, you'll close all of the other programs in the Lightarama suite, then find the red light bulb icon to enable your schedule. If you need to make any changes after that point, you'll disable your show before you make edits. If you need more information or assistance, the Lightarama help file has extensive explanations of every feature in the software. You can access the help file online or directly from any software program when you click this icon. And that's all for this tutorial. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you never miss a notification about new videos.